Welcome into Nuts and Bolts with your host, Tony Tucker and Mike on the mic. And this week, the Chargers go up against the Washington football team, a team that their quarterback is more famous for his beard than his play on the field. They don't have a team name, and the only W they're going to have after this weekend is the one on the side of their helmet. San Diego Chargers are fortunate to have Lance Allworth. Don Coriel. It is time for some Chargers football. Tony Tucker, Mike on the mic here once again, and this is your week one preview. We're going to be doing this for every game, every weekend. You may catch us on the weekend, actually live streaming the game. That's just going to depend on scheduling here on the Warzone Sports Network and what other games are going on. I am excited. I know you're excited, Tony. <sighs> just a sigh of relief that it's finally here. I cannot wait. So this is the first time that I'm officially bolting up, right? So I've lived in Southern California for 20 years, and most of that time I've been without a team. But I lived in San Diego, and I got the local games. LA, we get the local games. And I have rooted for the Chargers fans. And it just never fully put my emotional investment into the team. And that all changes this year. I am fully on board and ready to completely be stacked with powder blue fanaticism all season long. Bleeding you, powder blue. You even got the jersey on right there behind you. And Keenan Allen. There it is. There it is. That's when we went to the uh, the SoFi Stadium Fan Fest, which was a ton of fun a couple of weeks ago. We're going to get into the injury report. We're going to cover some X-Factor players. I just want to say this really quick to all the Chargers fans. We are a small community, and we understand that, but we are a tight community. And I want you guys to know that after this season, after what the world sees this season. Don't, don't push away the new bandwagon Chargers fans that are coming in. Embrace them. Teach them how to do it. Teach them how to bolt up so we can continue to sell out SoFi Stadium for years to come. That's just a little disclaimer because it's, it's going to happen. You're going to see powder blue all over the place after this season. We can go at them. We can make a joke like, ha, where were you when, when you know we were 5-11? Or we can embrace them and we can become a bigger family. I want to become a bigger family. No, I agree. And I, I think it, where you're going to see it start first is the internet. And mm -hmm. then it's going to spill over into Los Angeles. You're going to have, like, you know, even my nephew, he can't deny how sweet the jerseys are. And he's a Rams fan. So it's like exactly. he he's very close growing up in L.A. <laughs> it's all it's going to take. I'm preparing myself mentally for it because I know it's going to happen. And number 10 is a big part of it. Speaking of Chargers, and good thing number 10 isn't on this list. We're going to look at the injury report each week. This is a little bit early. Um, we're recording this on, I don't even know what day of the week it is. I think it's Wednesday or Tuesday. And the game's on Sunday, so this could change. But here is the injury report as of right now for both the Chargers and Washington. There are some concerning names in there. Uh, the names in blue are names I'm not too concerned with as far as their importance to the game. Yes, Gabe Neighbors, Chase Daniel, we'd love to have them on the field, but not necessarily required. The ones that I highlighted in yellow are the guys that I'm concerned with and I want to see out there. Um, and on the other side with Washington, the yellow highlighted names are kind of just guys that aren't, aren't going to matter too much towards the game. And the red highlighted guys are the guys that we want to keep an eye on for their status for Sunday. So for the Chargers, Brian Bulaga, I think he's the most questionable out of everyone on this list. Everyone else is pretty locked in. They're just kind of on here for uh, the technicality part of being on the injury report and not practicing and everything. Um, but Brian Bulaga obviously injured a lot of last year, a lot of last year. We need to see him out there. He is our uh, right tackle, so we're going to need him out there. He's a starting right tackle, and he's a Pro Bowl-level player when he's healthy. Uh, Chase Daniel, he's also questionable. I'm expecting him to play. Jalen Guyton, same thing. Corey Lindsley. He's kind of just been taking it light all of camp. I don't know if anyone's noticed that. He hasn't been practicing full uh, very much. He wasn't playing in any of the preseason games. So I'm not too concerned there. I think it's just, like I said, the technicality. If he's not practicing, they put him on the injury report. It's part of the, part of the game. Same thing with Kenneth Murray. Me and Tony actually saw his injury in person, and he's doing okay. 
uh, and he's practicing and everything. So expecting him to play. Gabe Neighbors, expecting him to play. And then, of course, Rashawn Slater, I believe he's dealing with a lower back injury. So that is a little bit concerning, but listed as questionable on Tuesday and Wednesday. Should be ready to go for Sunday. Tony, any names on here that jump out to you before we move on to Washington that you're like, oh, I'm really, really concerned about this? I'm not really concerned in general because they haven't given me a reason to be concerned. I think my my overall concern comes from the fact that we're starting the season with three offensive linemen that are very crucial to this team taking a step in the right direction, right? Like you invest the money in Corey Lindsley, you draft the, the draft capital in Slater. You want to have those guys out there. You want to be able to give a quarterback who took no no reps in the preseason, a little bit of comfort against this Washington football team. So heading in with a little bit of bumps and bruises and backaches already is a little concerning, but no one player. I'm like, I, I can't freak out because I don't know how bad anything is. We haven't seen him out there to see if it hinders their ability to dominate. Yeah. And as we get into the season, we're going to see this kind of news. These injury reports get released Earlier on in the week, I think because of week one, even Chargers.com does not have an injury report displayed. I had to go to a secondary website. Uh, moving over to the Washington football side, I'm not going to read all the names because some of these guys don't matter at all. Oh, I want to note, Ryan Smith, cornerback, a guy we're expecting to be a depth piece and is going to get a lot of playing time, was put on the IR last week. So we're not going to see him until around week four at the at the soonest. And, and they re-signed or re-brought on from the practice squad. Come on, Hall, a guy who's – you know, putting in a lot of work in the preseason. So that's what's going on with Ryan Smith, everyone. Uh, he's a new addition to the team this year. On the Washington side, we'll talk about Dylan Cantrell. Sorry, man, I, I miss you being our preseason star tight end for years uh, prior to this. He's on the IR for Washington, so it's sad to see. Just a familiar name. But really, Curtis Samuel is questionable. And from the looks of things and the sounds of things, from what Joe Morley was just saying on, on the show I was just tuned into, he, he may actually not play in this game, which is a big deal. He's a Swiss Army knife of a weapon for Washington, and he's a guy that Ryan Fitzmagic, Ryan Fitzmagic is probably going to fall in love with over the course of the season, in my opinion. So him being out uh, is key to our game plan, I'm sure. And then Montez Sweat, the big one. I'm not sure how serious the questionable tag is on him, but if he's not playing, that's a big part of their defense right there. Uh, one of the more underrated pass rushers, in my opinion, in the league. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> No, no, no. I was, my dog was about to do something crazy, but the sweat, here's the sweat deal is if he plays, it just makes me the one thing I'm most worried about even that much more worrisome, right? The, the Curtis Samuel thing, uh, for him to be fully effective, if the injuries hindering him a little bit, um, they still have some other pieces that I like there that you, you kind of got to worry about. So if it was, McLaurin it's a different story you know like I yeah. think Logan Thomas um could be somebody early on that gives uh fits some some comfortableness but then maybe this opens things up for Diami 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 Brown Diami Brown thank you yeah to make his debut uh, a little bit sooner than we thought uh, their injury report has far less names of concern than the one that you showed for the charges. But again, like you said, you went to a secondary site. Maybe when the new one comes out, we'll see healthy just next to mm -hmm. all the people that I do have just even the smallest of concerns for right now. But yeah, I think fully expected to play everyone except for Brian Bulaga is the only one when you see questionable next to his name is actually questionable to play this weekend. So we'll see how that story develops. Keep an eye on Twitter. Make sure you guys are following Gilbert Manzano and Fernando Ramirez, beat writer for the Chargers, always putting out good news. Daniel Popper. All right, now we're going to get into our X-Factor players. These are just either players, a position group, whatever it might be, that we think is going to be key to victory in this game this week versus the Washington football team. Tony, you chose Rashawn Slater. I think you meant to choose the entire offensive line in general. Um, but uh, tell us a little bit about why you chose these guys as being our X-Factor in this game this week. Okay, so that's why when you showed that injury report, which I hadn't seen anywhere, uh, made a concern. It, it makes it even a greater concern because of who we're going up against. Chase Young, like trying to keep a guy out of the backfield that a lot of people think could push for defensive MVP, right? Like they see that sort of potential from him. And even if you saw him like in the brief moment of the preseason, he was already ruining people's lives. Mm -hmm. And that is not what I want to see on 
week one, it's going to be hostile. These guys are going to, Justin Herbert's going to be playing his first NFL game in front of like a packed stadium. Like that's another big thing. You need to have your offensive line that's going to be there on the same page, communicating, not giving up false starts, not trying to get that extra quick step. So that's one spot that I'm just like, if these guys can show up and play good and you have a lot of veteran leadership, Lindsay Balaga, if they're there and they could say, Hey, we've been here before young fella settle down. I know you have your hands full. We're going to help you out. We're going to put round tree in the backfield and we're going to let him chip. We're going to let him, you know, like if he gets by you, we're going to have somebody there to make your debut in the NFL. You know, you don't have to worry about the back issue. You don't have to carry the full load week one. I'm looking at the offensive line to go on the road and not only provide some holes in the running game, but also like deal with an, you know, a crowd that's filled animosity and, and be able to control the game. Lindsay, there communicating, helping Herbert pick up blitzes, you know, switches, audibles, all that stuff. So I, I'm, I'm keyed into the rookie and his debut against the stud at, on the defensive line. I love it. I love it. It's going to, it's going to be good to see if, if this offensive line is successful versus the Washington defensive defensive line. We should feel good about this year because we're not going to see much better throughout the rest of the season. So it's a very good test to start our season off. And I love getting uh, this test early on in the season because if they do, you know, succeed a little bit, just because these guys are going to have a little bit of growing pains communication wise, I'm going to talk about Lindsley and, and what he's going to do and bring to the game that in a second here. But if there is some breaks communication wise, if there are some mistakes, we can recover. Their offense is not insane. We're going to be able to slow down their offense. It's not like uh, it's the end-all, be-all if there's mistakes in this game. I think this is the perfect game where we're testing ourselves versus a very talented team, but a team that also is filled with a bunch of young players where we can make our own mistakes and get away with it a little bit more than it would be if we were playing the Chiefs week one like we usually do uh, in previous seasons. The thing with Corey Lindsley, and if you've been around the game of football or if you've been around the offensive line and you're more than just a casual fan, casual fans don't realize this, center. Bringing in a center, especially the best center in football, uh, communication-wise across the whole line, it's like the quarterback of the line. And it's going to be a huge improvement for us to go from Prince Prince Questenberry, Questenberry, whatever his, however you pronounce his last name, to Lindsley. And I made that comparison, and I'm going to utter those words again, how I said that the Buccaneers went from Jameis Winston to Tom Brady and how that helped the entire offense communication-wise. That's where I was going with that take, by the way. I was not going with Lindsley being equivalent to bringing in Tom Brady. But when you talk about how much he's going to help out the line in a lot of the same ways as bringing in a veteran quarterback, bringing in a veteran center does the same thing for the offensive line. Now, I went for my X factors, being the secondary in general, Asante Samuel being the main one because I feel like he's going to be the guy that's going to be shadowing Terry McLaurin if it's going to be anybody. I wouldn't be surprised to see a group effort either where they just whatever side Terry lines up on, it's going to be Michael Davis or Asante Samuel Jr. But we know that this pass rush is going to get after Ryan Fitzmagic, and we know we're going to force Fitzmagic to throw those 50-50 balls up, which is what he's been doing his whole career. I was arguing with my buddy, who's a Washington football fan, this weekend, and I was telling him how Ryan Fitzmagic, if you combine fumbles and you combine interceptions, has turned the ball over more times than he has scored touchdowns in his career in the NFL. And our pass rush is going to get after him, and they're going to give our secondary opportunities to take the ball away these guys got to do it. And I think Asante Samuel can do it. We see this is a picture from his first interception in the preseason. Uh, and I think that they're going to be an X factor because, yes, the pass rush is going to get there. I can almost guarantee you that. The question is, is RRDBs going to be able to keep up with Terry McLaurin, going to be able to keep up with Logan Thomas and capitalize on the mistakes that our pass rush forces Ryan Fitz tragic to make on Sunday? Yeah. Um... I, I also think at the beginning of the year when everybody's kind of like ironing things out, figuring it out, not a lot of people played in the preseason. Um, you know, there, there's different rules and, and stuff that's going on protocol wise, whatever you have to be able to capitalize on this. And if you want to be a playoff team in the AFC, these are the kind of games you got to win. I don't think that this, this game is make or break for the Washington football team. One, cause they play in the NFC East and in the NFC in general, you can get in with nine wins or whatever. You have to be able to go on the road and beat the other conferences playoff contenders, which is what I believe the Washington football team is. So 
early on, it's good to get him early. Everybody's condition is at different levels, and in football conditioning is a different thing. So if they can have a less effective defense, a non-cohesive Washington football team offense with a new quarterback in there who's already a little bit reckless, then maybe we're seeing some uh, some advantages tip in favor of the Bolts. Yeah, I love it. And I was telling that same buddy who was telling me that Ryan Fitzmagic is going to get them 11 wins this year. Like, one, he's never done that before. But two, uh, <laughs> I will be on with the 10 wins for Washington if you can guarantee me right now that Ryan Fitzmagic is going to throw less than 30 times per game. Is he going to become a game manager that plays with a strong defense all of a sudden, 17 years into his career? No, I don't think so. The opportunities are going to be there for the Chargers, and that leads us in to our final prediction. Any little like takes like, oh, I'm going to see this from this player today, fully expecting this from that player today, and a final score prediction from you, Tony, and I'll give mine after. So I think that I was really close to putting Eckler on my players to watch list, right? Because I honestly believe this, that Eckler is going to offer the greatest check down protection, right? Like even if you get beat, if Eckler's just slipping out in there and you can just sort of dump off the ball to him and he's able to really pick up some extra yards, that's a matchup I'm looking at. And also just sort of a security over the over the middle of the field in Jared Cook. That's another matchup that I'm going to look at that I think that they could have an advantage at. I'm not exi- I'm not that familiar with the coverage of the Washington football team linebackers. But just the way that Jared Cook plays football, I think he has a speed advantage over most people. And if he can take advantage of that a few times, it will be great. Um, I'm looking at this to be a semi-close game, uh, you know, like within one score. Uh, My final prediction is going to be the Bolts 29. I'm going with a weird number because of the kicking game, even though I'm starting (laughs) my boy Vizcaino in fantasy football this weekend. (laughs) And the Washington (laughs) football team. 23. So I got a 29 23 final score. Bulls start off the season one and oh. I love it. And you keep that gap. We don't want games to be settled by field goals this year. We're, we're a little worried about those uh 45 yard game winners this year. My and I, in previous years, it's been a, a problem forever. Um, but a little bit extra stress this year because we did not address that's one of our biggest holes is the kicking game. Game um, ends with a Derwin James takeaway, too. I like it. I like that. I was just about to talk about that. <clears throat> I think Darwin James gets a pick or a fumble, forced fumble, fumble recovery, makes an impact play of some sort. I think the Chargers overall get three forced turnovers at least in this game. Now, Washington defense is very good. So even with those three forced turnovers, I'm thinking it's going to be close. Like you're saying, I think I might even actually bring the score down a little bit. to like a 24-17 prediction, but I'm still in favor of the Chargers. I'm going to be in favor of the Chargers every week and the Chargers moving on to 1-0. Offensively, Here's my take. Jared Cook scores two touchdowns in his Chargers debut. I love it. I, I honestly think that's the matchup that, like I said, getting those easy easy passes out, like, hey, the pressure's coming, Eckler's just there. And maybe it's only two, three yards, but if he can break one of those and it turns into a big 25 to 40-yard gainer one time, and if Cook can win his matchup consistently – I know we want to see Keenan Allen and, and all this stuff, but it, early on in the year, you might not have time on the road to let him be able to really like win mm-hmm. his matchups. He might not have that full three seconds early on in the year with a defense this good. So take advantage of matchups, you know, quick little seam routes to cook, you know, quick little dump offs, check down to Eckler and let your playmakers work. Herbert's way smarter than I am. I have no doubt that he will he will know the same thing, take advantage of the same things. That's what I'm thinking. I can't wait for a reaction if Josh Palmer catches like a nice little 45 yard pass down the field in the middle of the third quarter after we've been grinding it down the field all game. It'll be so nice. I say Jared Cook two touchdowns because I feel like that's the hole in their defense. They're gonna have a rookie linebacker starting. I'm a huge fan of Jared Davis. I have him down as my rookie of the year candidate. Week one matchup. I think Jared Cook's veteran experience. Size, speed, and all that. He can take advantage of that down in the red zone. So two touchdowns for Jared Cook. A lot of Austin Eckler work is what we're expecting. Not that we don't think Keenan Allen's going to eat. He eats against all secondaries. He cooked up the LOB back in the day. I don't know if you guys remember that. They're one of the best defenses ever. So I'm not scared of the Washington defense. Um, But, yeah, that's the keys to the game, everyone. We went over the injury report.
talked about some X factors. Any last words, Tony, before we uh, hit this music and get ready for Sunday? Nope. Bolt up, fully charged, snatching W's this weekend. All of them. Make sure you guys are tapping the subscription button. There is going to be a Washington football team fan covering the Washington football team preview. So we'll see how different his take is on all of this. He should predict the Washington football team to lose if he wants to get his prediction right. Uh, but let's, as Chargers fans, keep an eye out for that on the channel. Make sure you have notification bells turned on and you're subscribed so we can just invade his entire show when it goes live. Uh, what do you guys think? I'm in. I'm in. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm Mike on the mic. That's Tony Tucker. And we will see you next time after we beat the Washington football team on Sunday. San Diego Chargers are fortunate to have Lance Allworth. On Blue